How's it going? Will everybody go out? You hit, you hit everything? What do you do this Yeah, week? so what we'll do is you get a certain number of days, and the NCAA allows you a certain number of days. So we'll use the biggest chunk of those days this during this bye week and then our next bye week. Um, we'll do some during Fridays before home games. Um, but uh, we'll be out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, a few coaches will be out all three days, but most of them either one or two days over that, that period. Uh, seeing 20, 20 recruits, either guys that are committed or guys that – um, that we're heavily involved with, and then also going and get some live evaluation to 21 recruits as well. You mentioned <clears throat> window dressing a little bit to move the ball. Is this about what you normally do, or is this a little bit more than you've had to do in the past in other places um, to, to try to move the ball a little bit? Yeah, we're having to window dress a little bit. You have to reinvent yourself a little bit every each and every week. Uh, we had to do that last year um, once our starter got hurt. Uh, so... Um, uh, it's probably more so in the you know from the middle of the season last year at uh, Troy and and through the first really we didn't do it week one but week two three and four uh, it's probably more so than we would normally do yeah. Is there been any discussion about going for a sixth year for Josh or is that going to be something down the road? Yeah, down the road. Yeah, down the road. Um, haven't had those talks. Like I said. Um, He's going he's gonna to miss this year, and then we'll kind of, as he recovers, we'll kind of figure out what's what's next. Now you talked about explosive plays. What do you guys have to do to get downfield passing? Yeah, kind of we got to complete them, Keenan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, no, nah, you know, we, I think we called, and I'm going off my, I think we called either six or seven of them in the game, and um, and we just didn't connect. It was, we really didn't – we didn't connect. And so we've got to do a better job schematically, putting ourselves in better position from a coaching perspective. And then we got to do a better job of winning on routes and then uh, throwing the ball down, feel better. You know, um, we've been hit and miss as we've gone through the year. It hadn't been a strength for sure. It's something once we play, especially these teams that are prolific offensively, that, you know, we're not going to be able to kind of grind out wins. Uh, I'm not naive. I understand kind of what we got coming. So we're going to have to hit some of those big plays rather than counting on 9, 10, 11 play drives to score touchdowns. Can you say uh, what this injury was on Josh, you know, whether it was labor or you know, Yeah, you know, no, I'm going to stay away from it. It was, I mean, it was a normal football injury. All right. Um, some of that stuff HIPAA-wise I got to be careful with. And delay in getting the surgery from the time he had the injury till now, was that uh, trying, yeah, to, not, trying to see if he could play or no, there wasn't. There wasn't a long delay. He actually he had a minor injury that kept him out the first um, the first game that he missed. I guess that would have been North Carolina State, and this injury has been something that's been lingering. With with him no longer available, depth wise, how do you develop depth up front? Do you try to push a couple more that haven't played? Yeah. So, you know, in the game on on Saturday, we really meant to play go six at least seven, but we ended up playing the whole way with five, and I think that's just because we got off to a good start. Uh, Coach Moore felt more comfortable playing those five. I think you'll see John Hughes continue to play. Um, I think you'll see Mike Brown uh, definitely uh, get some get some snaps and get in the rotation. Uh, Junior is a guy that we've, we've been repping a lot. He plays behind Colton. Um, and then we've got Blaine Scott's a guy that has shown some flashes. Uh, Stilly is, excuse me, he's backing up Bryson Mays at center. And then, um, you know, we're giving – uh, a lot of work to to Brandon Yates and Parker Moore as well. You know they're not necessarily ready now, but toward the last piece of the season they they they, they very well may be. You know we want to redshirt those guys, but the four game rule allows you to maybe give them some action later in the year if need be. Could you talk a little bit about what it takes from going being from being the starting center to not playing to filling in at guard and now playing the way Chase is playing. Yeah, I think it says a lot about him. You know, he, um, you know, lost his starting position uh, during fall camp. Um, and really that was, that was based on more some erratic snaps than it was basically in, in pass protection or uh, in run blocking. Um, and, then he, and then he came back and, and played against Missouri um, at center. Um, but then really since then, since moving back and we got him locked in on one spot at, at that right guard spot, he's really came – you know, he didn't play particularly well against Missouri. I think he he took the coaching. He 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 his work ethic. Um, you may be from an investment standpoint as far as getting prepared to play. And then really, he's had two great weeks of practice, and he's played at a high level. 
you know, I believe it was after the Missouri game, you said something about wanting to get more carries for Alex Sinkfield going forward. We mm -hmm. haven't really seen that in these last well, few games. Have plans changed for him? Or well, he started the game. He started the game against North Carolina State. Um, he's had he's he's had a little bit of a lower um, leg injury that's kind of limited him. He had that's and that's one of the main reasons. I think this bye week could be good for him to get back fully healthy. But he did he did start he started the North Carolina State game. How important was it that the development and, and Letty Brown and, and Martell coming in and giving you that power football run? Yeah, we were able to do that. Um, I thought Kansas played really physical. You know, there's a couple shots where they really came down and hit. Um, uh, Letty and and Petaway, and those are big physical running backs, you know. Um, but that that trio that ran the ball on Saturday, I thought they did a nice job. They were decisive, and that's that was kind of what was missing from the running back room the first two weeks is we just weren't very decisive. We kind of you know paused in the hole a little bit, kind of ran east and west, and now what you're seeing is guys putting their foot in the ground, getting behind their pads, being physical, finishing runs, and being decisive, and so. I thought Letty has is, is, is done some really good things the last two weeks, kind of getting back. You know, he missed about three weeks there. Um, and you can see him kind of getting his timing back. And he adds something to that room just because he is big, he is physical. He's a guy that it's hard to bring down. And then Petaway, I talked about this after the game. I thought he had a really good week last week. I think that speaks to him being mature. I think it's a, it's a great learning tool for some of our younger players. Um, he didn't mope. Um, he accepted it, didn't like it, but he accepted it, came back, went to work, um, and gave himself an opportunity in the game. And when he got that opportunity, he made the most of it. Is this week, this more, week. Uh, is this week more about your you know, addressing the things that you talked about at the top, or do you try to get a little bit of a head start for the next game? Yeah, we'll, we'll work a little bit of Texas. Um, uh, we'll practice Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and we'll work a little bit of Texas. But a lot of it's centered around us. We'll do some good on good work. Um, I think it's about during this bye week, it's about efficiency in your time. Like uh, we gave the guys off Sunday and Monday. Uh, they'll also have Friday and Saturday off. So we'll work Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's about efficiency, having them in and out. Um, we'll review the game today and we'll, and we'll practice. Um, but try to be out there for about an hour with our veterans and then keep our development guys out in. in do some controlled scrimmaging, not necessarily tackling, but doing some controlled scrimmaging for them over the next three days to get them a lot of repetitions. Um, so it'll be a, it'll be a more so working on us, but also looking ahead, getting a few reps on some things that Texas does. Yeah, um, the long break is kind of neat, but you played a whole bunch of games with that Saturday Thursday turnaround, mm -hmm. which is really short. I don't I don't think you lost one. How unique is that quick turnaround? The There's quick. Hardly any time in between games. Yeah, um, you know, we we lost one my first year. I think at Troy, and then we, um, then we put a lot of time in it. And I may be wrong. You know, my mind goes a little bit. But um, the you're asking about the short turnaround, kind of. Yeah. So we always erred at Troy on on um, less time, less practice time, and really concentrated on walkthroughs and, and mental mental preparation. We really had when we were playing on the short week. We really had one what we called normal practice. OK, so what we would do is we would try to have somewhat of a normal practice on Monday where um, depending on what part of the year, if it was early in the year, we'd wear shells. If it was later in the year, we just wore helmets. But we practice at a, at, a, at a good rate. But then the rest of the week was basically jog through, walk through deal, concentrating on being fresh. Um, and then in, uh, the other thing also at Troy, Mike, was is we played a lot of uh, – so we would have a Saturday, may not play again until Tuesday, or Saturday or Thursday, like where you have, you know, a, a Saturday in between. Am I making sense? So we would work ahead on opponents a little bit as well. Hey Neil, uh, I've yes. noticed a lot of communication issues, but running a guy out for the, the two-point conversion at the end is the first time I really started getting heated. Yeah, when I got pissed, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. You hit it well with the, the call sheet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, know my mom, I knew my mom was watching. <laughs> is that something that the off week afford? Nah, that that, that, here's the deal. is So you tell everybody you're going to go for two because we knew we were going to go for two. All right. Uh, we started the drive. Um, so everybody knows you're going to go for two. And you get down there and we hit a third and five uh, run. Petaway scores. Coaches get excited. Players get excited. And we don't get the right personnel on the field, so we had to use a timeout. Um, my opinion is if we don't use that timeout, we probably get the two-point play. But because we had to sub, 
that's something that we've kind of done in the past. And they're well coached over there, so they were able to coach their kids up on it once we used the timeout. Um, but you don't want to take that penalty and move it back five. So um, that was really the only communication piece. Um, and, and that's more from excitement rather than from preparation. Neil, you got two of the true freshmen in, in Jennings and Wright both played mm -hmm. again. Have you made decisions on what their future is moving forward or yeah. were you red shirt? No, I think that if, if everything stays the same as it is right now, I think both of them moving forward will continue to play. Um, Winston played, I think, 41 snaps in the game. Um, and he showed some improvement. Um, you know, Ali, and he, he probably played the best as far as our outside receivers at X and Z position. He, he was probably – he probably played and graded out the highest of any of those guys. So, um, if everything stays the same, we will continue to, to play both of those guys, yes. Can you uh, discuss a little bit the progress you've seen in your quarterback since, since you got here and, you know, looked mm -hmm. at him? Well, I think on Saturday it probably wasn't his best, but – I thought he did a good job managing the game. I thought the the drive before half uh, was was really well done by him. Um, he he managed the clock. Uh, he was efficient in his throws. He went to where the ball needed to go. Uh, so I think he's improving. Um, and just like I was telling Keenan, our next step is we've got to get the ball downfield. You know, and that's something that, that he knows he's got to improve on. And we've got to improve on, again, we've got to improve on our protection on those downfield throws. We've got to improve on, on schematically setting up those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And we've got to improve on getting open. Okay, so I think that's pit, bits and pieces everywhere. But he's definitely part of that equation. Um, but he's shown improvement. Can he play better? Yes. Um, has, has he – I think that he has made marked improvements since the opening game of JMU. All right. I think some of that's just shaking off some rust where he hadn't played in so long. When – an opposing coach says he didn't think he'd be that good. Is that an insult or a compliment to how much improvement he has made? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't really pay. I saw it. the only time I saw that honestly was uh, on that video that we released yesterday. I wouldn't have even known it if we didn't. Um, so we released that video from, and our video people do a really good job. I should I should note that as I talk about um, led, led by Austin Gaines, they do a really good job. Alan showed him some love earlier this this year, but. Um, I, I didn't really take – I didn't think one way or another about it. Last week, um, you put out, like, an informal invitation to Pat McAfee to come back to mm -hmm. school. I'm just wondering, what are your thoughts on a former player feeling like they're not welcome back to town? Well, I think if you listen to the very first part of that and you didn't listen to the whole thing, so, I, you know, I listened to it two different times. First time I, I listened to it, I'm like, man, that – but then he comes back around. If you listen to the whole piece that he did um, – where he talks about, hey, coming back. And, and, and so I wasn't here during that time, so I really can't speak of it. I can say this, he's done a tremendous, for the brand, he's doing, I mean, Thursday night football, radio show, the dude's killing it. And uh, I think he's an important piece of our football history. And he, just like anybody else that's, that that's, has a part of this program, is welcome back anytime. So – I look forward to the day he comes back. I hope I hope he I hope he does, and um, maybe it's a Thursday night football game. Maybe it's him just having a having an open weekend and being able to come back for a game. But but he'll be welcome, and I do think that he's done an incredible job putting himself in a position he's in right now. When you said that you didn't think the team handled prosperity very well, is that something you can coach out of him, or is that on the players to kind of? No, I think you got to use an example. I, I, I'm not totally shocked by it um, because you know, and I spoke to this a little bit. Um, last week is so we have we have guys that have won games all right but we don't necessarily have a whole lot of guys that have been a like a vital piece of winning those games they were on the team but they weren't necessarily making the game winning plays on offense defense or special teams and so we go out and we play really well against North Carolina State and beat a, a program that's you know, won nine games the last two years, second second most wins in ACC. That's a, that's a good, really good program win, especially taking how we played the week previously against Missouri. And so what happens is, well, Sam James gets newcomer of the week. Defense is, is praised for how they shut them out in the second half. You know, a lot of sacks, tackles for loss. Offensively, we're able to play with a lot of tempo. A lot of the young guys played well. We ran the ball, you know, and all these guys are like, oh, yeah, well, Maybe we are pretty good, you know. So maybe, maybe you know, instead of you know, like a veteran or somebody that has experienced success before is going to say, okay, that's what it takes. That's what we got to continue to do. Where natural human tendency, especially if you've never had that type of success, say, oh yeah, 
okay, yeah, now now we're back. Now we're back. And so what we're going to do today, because this is the first time we're really going to spend some time with them, and I think it's important, you know, they need to have some time away from us, and that's what the last 48 hours, really since we got back early Sunday morning, has been about. So today when I sit on the, stay on the same stage, I'm going to say, hey, listen, here's the deal. We won the game, and we're fortunate. I'm proud of you for winning the game, and this is why we won the game. But this is also why we didn't play our best. And if we don't, if we continue at this rate, we're not going to be successful for the rest of our season. So we got to understand we got to we got away with these mistakes in this game, but we're not going to be able to continue to do that. And here's where we got to get better. And it starts with our preparation. It starts with our practice habits. And then we're going to go over some some practice clips from last week and and how it matches up some game game clips. And, and Neil, um, after a game, you talk to recruits and say, "Hey, how do we look on TV?" Probably couldn't do that Saturday and Sunday. What type of um, extra work or different work do you have to do now with these future ESPN Plus games where not as many people yeah. can see them? You know, Mike, honestly, that's something that I really haven't evaluated, honestly. Um, I've got the, the ESPN Plus app. Um, we've The Sun Belt has been using it for a couple years, um, and so I'm familiar with it. Um, I use it at home some, too. Um, but I haven't really evaluated it from a recruiting standpoint yet. So um, I'd be giving you an uneducated answer. So, but Do you consider it being part of, I mean, like something you do have to think about soon and how you address it? Cause yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we probably need to get a plan together for it. Here, here's the deal, though. I think what you'll find is, is and this is, this is kind of news to me, and I don't see myself as very old, but I'm dated as far as this. You know, um, in the last year or so, I found myself watching more, you know, using Amazon Prime or using – I was just asking the other day about – asking my wife, like, do we have a Netflix account? And you know what I mean? And so, like, I think with that age group, like, those subscription services is much more prevalent, you know. Um, but we haven't – and that's probably something we, we will do in the future is is talk to them about ESPN+. Plus. I actually think it's a, it's a really good – it's a really good application. I know there was some bandwidth issues. I do understand that. Um, but a lot of that's out of our control, too. Okay. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you.